Hey guys, Grumpy here with a fun video today. Um, today we're going to do a tier list on all the vanilla ships in Star Sector. Um, this is going to be... It's for fun. Um, it'll be partly educational um, at some points, I, I, I assume. But uh, for the most part, it's just a relaxing video. Now that the campaign's over, um, we can focus on other things. Okay. Um, so jumping right in, we have the Astral. Uh, the Astral is a great ship. It has a very good shields. Um, I think it boasts six fighter bays. Six or eight. I think it's six fighter bays. Uh, phenomenal carrier. Great anchor ship. Would strongly recommend. Uh, here we have the pirate version of the Atlas. Um, it is a capital ship. And it has a lot of large armaments. Both uh, missile and ballistic. Uh, unfortunately, it has the armor of a balloon, and therefore it has to go in F tier. I'm sorry, I know there's a lot of proponents on the Atlas as a capital ship. I'm not one of them. Uh, the Atlas as a um, carrier, though, as a freighter, S tier. Uh, best best freighter in the game. Doubles also as a fuel capacity in a pinch. Phenomenal. Put uh, expanded cargo holds on this bad boy and then build in um, Aug Drive Field if you don't have, uh, what's it called? The mod, bulk transportation. Alright, Conquest. Uh, good capital ship, really great capital ship, fun to build. Um, the problem with the Conquest though is that its shield is both weak and it only covers half the, the ship, so it's flank. Well, I guess it's not really pro it's not really a problem so much with the conquest because you can put flax on this flank, um, but its shield is really bad. Like the damage on it is, uh, I think, 1.2 to start or 1.4 something like that. Uh, so not not really that good. Uh, the Legion, though, good capital ship, tanky, ton of armor, um, brings a lot to the fight. It's a carrier. Uh, it's low deployment cost, so it's great for an early capital ship when you don't really have um, you know a large fleet to support it very good starter the legion 14 s tier i love this ship um it's a carrier just the same as the legion the difference is it has more armor which is better um as far as like damage calculations go the more armor you have the better it is uh and then on top of that it replaces the ballistic uh, large slots on the legion with missile large slots and i think missile large slots are a lot better to bring to a fight than um, large ballistic slots. Uh, the reason being is your missiles, your large missiles, can project through your other ships, whereas your ballistics cannot. Um, so you bring a lot more pressure to the fight. All right, they have the Odyssey. I do not really use this ship that much. Um, it is a good ship. It is a great ship, uh, especially if you put um, exotic weapons on this ship. Uh, the armaments really complement that kind of style. But for me, I just don't know how to pilot it and I don't know how to use it effectively. It's a carrier, um, it's support, it's close combat, it's fast, it's maneuverable, it just does everything. And I don't think it does one thing particularly well. Uh, we have the Onslaught. Uh, onslaught's okay. Uh, I'll put it in high B tier, uh, above the Conquest. Um, also, that's okay. Uh, very tanky ship, slow, but it's offset by the uh, burn drive. Good capital ship, same with the Legion. Um, the only reason the Legion is above the, the Onslaught is that the Legion is a carrier and the Onslaught isn't. Uh, but both are pretty much the same ship. Um, so for that reason, the Onslaught 14 is going to go in the, the A category. Um, same thing. Just more armor. Oh, the Paragon. S tier ship. Um, for obvious reasons. It just... Disco Ball. You can build it with Plasma Cannons, which I did recently. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that. I built it with four Plasma Cannons, and it turned out to be really more... Really, really effective. Even more so than, I think, the, uh, the Disco Ball variant. But Paragon, obviously, S tier ship. Um, it belongs up. Would I rather have an Astral or a Paragon? At, mm, 
I don't know. That's tough. I'll, I'd rather have an Astral. Uh, the Prometheus uh, LP variant. I have not piled this ship, but for the same reasons, for much the same reasons as the Atlas, it's going to go in F tier. I'll put it in D tier because it has meme potential. Um, but essentially the, the Pathers rigged a Prometheus, which I'm going to go ahead and put in uh, A tier. Actually, I'm going to put it in B tier, and I'll explain why. Uh, but the Pathers rigged a Prometheus as a battleship, um, I don't know why you would do this, as a Prometheus is a giant fuel balloon, uh, and not suitable for combat. It is low maneuverability, <laughs> um, it is very slow, and just overall not, not suited for the battlefield. Um, uh, yeah, and then the Prometheus is in the B, B tier, um, it's just a bit much. Actually, I'm gonna move it down to C tier. Um, unless you're carrying around multiple capital ships, you never need a Prometheus. Uh, the Phaeton, which is down here, which we'll talk about later on, is more than adequate to carry you through the late game. Um, a Phaeton is more than enough to, to uh, tote around like three to four capital ships, which is pretty excessive, um, to be honest. You don't really need four capital ships uh, at any one point, unless you're doing something specific. Uh, next we have the Aurora, the Aurora S tier ship, um, I would put the Aurora over an Astral, I would always bring another Aurora into the fight over an Astral, the Aurora is a monster of a ship, oh my goodness, it is fast, it is maneuverable, it punches hard, it has, it has an insane amount of missile slots, um, small, small energy slots for antimatter blasters, it has a ton of capacity, this thing is a beast. This thing goes one on one. Can with like in the in the player's hands can one on one some capital ships. Like, this thing is a monster. Um, definitely S tier ship. Odyssey. Uh, I know it's a lot of people's favorites. I'm gonna put it in B tier. I tried building an Odyssey recently because I don't really use this is an this is an Apogee. Um, I tried building an Apogee recently without the. Um, plasma cannon on the front like without that build and it's really hard to design this ship um i did end up designing it with uh the capability to to destroy any capital ship so paragon onslaught legion conquest uh odyssey it can kill any capital ship um 1v1 but um it was just awkward like it's the way its armaments are faced is a lot of them are are hard points so hard points on the front, right? So you have to, you know, build it this way, right? Where it's shooting forward, um, with like the head of the the apogee. But then it has turrets and hard points on the side. So like you can't really bring all of your your shots to bear, right? Like a conquest, it goes sideways and gives them the full broadside. Um, a legion or an onslaught. Well, not really an onslaught, but a legion can give uh, the ship, like, it can fire all of its... It, I realize you can't see the mouse. It can fire forward with all... Like, a dominator can fire forward with all of its shots. Uh, an apogee... I would just put it in the AI's hand and give it a lot of missiles and just let it do its own thing. Um, I don't really... I'm not, a, I'm not an apogee respecter. I'm gonna put it in B tier. It's a good ship, though, um, for what it's worth, but, yeah. Uh, next up, we have the Champion. I love this ship. It's a great ship. Uh, good midline ship, um, or I guess good line ship, I should say. Um, pack as many of these into combat as you can. Put a Merv at the front of it and a uh, Tachyon Lance in the, large mis in the large energy slot, and you're good to go. Uh, the Pirate Colossus is a bad ship. The Lodic Path Colossus is a bad ship. The Colossus itself as a freighter is okay. Um, I mean, nothing to write home about. It's not bad. Um, it's not bad. Um, it just costs a lot of supplies for how little it can carry, which is a little annoying. Um, if you can, just go from a buffalo up to an atlas, just 
skip the Colossus entirely. The Dominator is a great ship. Uh, put it behind the Champion. I, I slept on the Dominator a lot. Um, I thought it was too slow and too... Um, it lacks maneuverability. Um, but that's not the case. It's really it's a really great ship for when your opponents have um, strong ships in kind, like capital ships or like um, a battle station. Well, I mean, like it's good against battle stations because battle stations are mobile. But um, if your opponent has like a, a paragon, you really want to counter the paragon with two dominators because they just provide so much pressure, right? And they can take a they can take a beating. So like two dominators versus a paragon, the dominators are gonna win every time. Um, and then also the the regular dominator, it's okay. Uh, it's in abundance. Um, you can get these everywhere. Um, I'm gonna put it in B tier. Even uh, yeah, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put it in A tier, but I'm gonna put it at the low the low end. Um, the legion, the uh, 14th dominator is uh, just a little bit better than the regular dominator. Both great ships. Uh, the Doom, a lot of people aren't going to like this. The Doom, I think, is C tier. Um, that's because phase ships got nerfed. Uh, phase ships got nerfed hard. Um, so in the past, previous to 0.95, um, phase ships used to not be um, encumbered by their flux. They used to move at their maximum speed at, at any flux level. So you could do things in the Doom that you couldn't do with any other ship. You can go into phase space, deploy your mines, back away from the fight, uh, dump your flux, go back in, and you would move at, you know, like 300, 400 top speed, which is insane. Like the average ship has a top speed of around like, mm, I'd say 120. That's including like frigates into that group. So you would be moving, you know, two to three times faster than all the rest of the ships on the battlefield. Um, causing absolute mayhem. Like, you, there were clips on YouTube of people soloing battle stations with just a Doom. Um, that's how good it was. Now, uh, phase ships move a lot slower based on their flux level, so you can't get away with those same things. And in order to do that, like, in order to get back to that level of power, you have to add in um, either adaptive phase coils or phase anchor, which costs a lot on a, on a uh, cruiser. And then you also need safety overrides, which cuts your... This is if you want to go fast. Uh, which cuts your combat, your peak performance time. So, it takes a lot to get the Doom back to where it was. And for that, I'd rather just bring, like, a Dominator, which can just sit in the face of an enemy. And, you know, tank shots all day and return a lot of, uh, a lot of fire. It, it is a fun ship. Um, if you want... Download the 0.91 version of the game and then play with the Doom, uh, just to experience it. It's it was it was really fun. Uh, next we have the Eagle. The Eagle is awkward to build. I tried building an Eagle. I was never good at it. Um, it has medium energy slots, which suck. Um, and then it has the uh, medium ballistic slots on the front, like. I'd rather the Eagle not be a, a step up from the Falcon and just be a different ship and just have um, two large energy slots and then two large um, ballistic slots and then have a ton of capacity to, to counterbalance it. As it is now, the Eagle is just, it's just awkward to build and it's slow. It's supposed to be like the Falcon and the Eagles are supposed to be like the fast cruisers and they're the champion is like as fast as them so really need to uh to work on the design there and then the 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 unarmored version is even worse so the pirate falcon though great ship tons of missile slots uh you really want to bring as many missiles to the fight as you can so that gets a shout out but again the falcons um and the eagles just go in d tier the fury uh, I don't really like this ship. Um, it's gonna go in C tier. I'll put it in high C tier because it is more effective than a Doom. Um, my gripes with the the Fury is that it, unlike the Aurora, which is its like sister ship, 
the fury just has less um less armaments right less like um missile slots it has less uh it has a medium slot yeah it has a medium slot it has a couple of medium slots um but those are completing with like missiles and energy missile or energy mediums aren't that good of a weapon um that's probably like the worst tier weapons so the fury just is just awkward um it doesn't have like the same sleek profile as the aurora um it doesn't have the same like number of armaments and the only thing going for the fury is that it has a better shield than the aurora but i mean even then it doesn't really matter because you don't really want to be um you don't really want to use your your fury to tank unless you're taking against something small like frigates or like one or two destroyers so not really a fan of the the fury next up we have the griffin i want to love this ship i really do um i praise missiles every opportunity i can and here we have the griffin which is considered the missile boat of the star sector universe and it just sucks as a missile ship it sucks it has one large missile slot one just just one large missile slot like what the the champion which isn't a considered a missile ship at all has one large one like what the legion well the legion is a capital ship so i forgive it but the legion has two like the the griffin needs to be redesigned first of all it needs to have at a minimum i'd say two two large missile slots would be great um i would really want three but that's probably entering the the field of you know overpowered but i want at least two on the missile boat right and then upgrade the small missile slots that dot around like the the ship the front of the ship upgrade those to mediums right and then not all of them but at least one more medium would be cool because right now it just has one on the front one on the side um but three medium slots and then the rest can be smalls which is fine um yeah it's just not a good ship and then for its ballistics it has one medium ballistic and i think two smalls um well it has a couple smalls around but those are mostly for point defense not really for offense it it just it's not enough <laughs> it's not enough to be considered like the missile ship um still okay to bring to battle but i mean i would forego it for like another champion really it's it's nothing to write home about it's nothing interesting the aurora is a better missile ship than the griffin because the aurora is faster more maneuverable and can use its missiles offensively in a push right to uh to blow up a target yeah it's sad i hope they redesign the griffin uh next we have the heron uh heron's a good carrier uh just good all-around ship um it's a little sparse as far as armaments go it mostly has small missile slots or small energy slots for point defense and then it has a okay-ish shield um but it struggles for like um ordnance points so it's really just suited for like just being a carrier um so you need you need to protect this ship if you bring it to to battle uh the mora is a flying brick <laughs> it is funny it has damper fields which is hilarious for a carrier um, I guess it's supposed to be like the offensive version of a carrier, but I would never deploy it in that capacity. Um, I, it's okay. There's a meme strategy where you can stack up um, D mods on your Moras and then take the perk that lowers your deployment cost per D mod on your ship, and then you can run like you know f 40 Moras in a in a battle and just spam the opponent with carriers or with uh, fighters. Uh, next up, we have the Revenant. Um, it's a phase ship. It's a phase ship Colossus, essentially. Um, the only difference between these two is that this lowers your, your fleet sensor profile, so you can do um, easier smuggling in this ship. Um, it does chew through supplies, though, so you do need uh, efficiency overhaul if you're going to run this ship. Uh, next, we have the Starliner. This isn't the Starliner. Yeah, this is the Starliner. Um, 
you only need this ship for one reason, and that's for colonization. Um, it just has large uh, cargo capacity or crew capacity, so you would just bring this when you go to colonize, and then after that, you don't really need to use it. Uh, here we have the Venture. Venture is an okay ship. Um, I didn't use it in this series, in the Zero to Hero series, but I did use it in another series on Twitch, which was the Iron Man, um, Iron Man Salvage Run. Um, Spacer Salvage Run, sorry. Uh, yeah, I used it in the Spacer Salvage Run, and, uh, it was, it was a good, good ship. Um, it has nice armaments, it has large missile, or medium missile slots, which is really good. Um, good ship, it also increases the amount of, of resources you get post battle and from salvaging so that's always good i put it in b tier low b uh <laughs> the pirate buffalo is is below f tier if there was another tier i would put it in that do not use this ship um it has no shield it has barely any armor um the only thing going for it is it has a ton of missile slots which is okay but unless your plan is to drive it into the enemy and just have it shoot all of its missiles at once and then like basically like one time use kind of ship situation, don't incorporate this into your fleet. Um, yeah, it's not, not even worth it. And it has low ordnance points and low uh, flux capacity. Just not a good ship. Uh, the Buffaloes. Uh, the Pirate Buffalo is okay. Uh, it gives you shielded cargo holds, which um, hides your contraband. This is okay. Uh, and then the regular buffalo, same thing. It's an okay ship. Uh, I'm going to put it in B tier. The Condor. Interesting. Uh, I, I, I haven't used the Condor. Um, it's not my favorite carrier. Uh, but it's... It's okay. Uh, it doesn't have any like flaws to it. Um, its special ability though has nothing to do with carriers. I believe it's f fast missiles for the for the Condor. Uh, the Drover, on the other hand, excellent. Um, ooh, I'll, I'll put it above the Falcon, um, which means that this needs to go. I'll put the the Heron above the Dominator. Uh, the Drover is a phenomenal carrier ship. Uh, it has reserve deployments, which increases the amount of um, fighters that you get. So what you can do is you can put two pairs of tridents in a Drover, and, or two sets of, of tridents in a Drover, and then use reserve deployment and end up with six tridents total on the battlefield. Uh, each of those have their own Atropos missiles, which is a ton of, of, um, of power projected. Um, really great ship, really great early ship, phenomenal build around, um, in a small fleet. Definitely, definitely, definitely recommend trying that out. Um, it also has four medium missile slots, or four small missile slots, which is insane, right? You could put Sabos in there, you could put, um, Harpoons, you could put even more Atropos missiles, uh, Reapers if you want. Like, it is pretty good. And it has a, a pretty generous, um, or ordnance point pool. So, you know, very flexible there. Uh, next we have the Enforcers. I don't like these ships. Uh, they... I don't... I don't know if it's me. I just don't know how to design these ships. Um, they're really restrictive on, or, on ordnance points, and they have low f uh, flux capacity, so it makes them really difficult to build. Right? Uh, you can use them as kind of like missile... Um like a missile delivery system kind of because they are tanky right uh but just uh i don't know uh bringing any other destroyer to the battlefield like um strikes or hammerheads would probably be better than an enforcer but i don't know i'll give them i'll give them a, another shake later on uh when i try to design them or when I try to incorporate them in a, in a further series. Uh, next we have the Gemini. Um, Gemini is an okay carrier. Uh, it is a civilian ship though. So that is something to be aware of. Uh, for that. I think I'm going to have to put it in D tier. 
because uh, the first thing you need to do is add Miltaros, um subsystems, which is gonna eat ordnance points. Um, so it is what it is. Uh, the Hammerhead is a great ship. Um, it is a good uh, line ship for the the early to mid game. You could put a ton of hammerheads in your fleet. Um, adding ad additional hammerheads to your fleet is only going to make it better. It's not going to make it worse. So I would definitely recommend that. Um, easy to build. Super easy to build. Uh, there's two variants. There's the safety overrides variant where it's really close combat. Um, you use assault chain guns. You use uh, needlers. Things like that. Sabo missiles to uh, burst down your opponent very quickly. And then there's the long range variant which uses... Uh, heavy maulers and rail guns to do a lot of pressure at a distance um, very good ship very very good ship would recommend uh next we have the harby the harby is a great ship the problem with it is though it needs to be piloted by um the player and i'm gonna actually put it in c tier up put it in uh it needs to be piloted by the player um, the reason for that is because of its special ability, which is um, Quantum Disruption, which uh, briefly overloads your opponent. Um, the, the Quantum Disruption is best used for timing in conjunction with missiles. So um, typically missiles, when they splash against the shield, they're like ineffective. They don't really do much. Um, what you do is you pilot a Harbinger. And right before the missiles impact the shield, um, you use its special ability, Quantum Disruptor, and then all the missiles penetrate the, the shield because the ship is overloaded, and they do maximum damage to the ship. Um, this is really good if you run it in conjunction with um, Dominators that have a ton of Reapers, because what will happen is the Dominators will apply uh, pressure, pressure, pressure to the shields. Um, the opponent will then put their shields up, for the incoming reapers and then what you can do is you can uh, disrupt the shields then the reapers land and then the dominators keep doing pressure 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 um, and then at that point the hull is already damaged so the ship freaks out and tries to like um, raise and lower its shields quickly to mitigate as much damage as possible but it, it it fails to do so and it just ends up dying completely um, so definitely would recommend pairing Harbingers with Dominators, but the problem is the Harbinger needs to be piloted by a human. Um, the What you could do is just bring multiple Harbingers to the fight, but then that the Harbinger is really frail. So now you're talking about replacing some of your other destroyers with a very expensive, very frail ship, and I'm not so convinced that's the right strategy. Uh, next up we have a Medusa. Medusa is a fun ship. Um, I wish I had more flux capacity. I'm going to put it in B tier. I'll put it above an Odyssey. Uh, I just wish I had more flux capacity. Really. Um, other than that, it's a good ship. Solid. Uh, the Pirate Mule is okay. It's a good ship. Nothing wrong with it. The Traditional Mule... Again, nothing really wrong with it. Uh, the Nebula, I don't know why it exists. You never need this ship. Um, it's a crew carrier. It carries, um, I think, like 500 crew or something like that. Never really need it. Um, you never really need uh, crew crew uh, freighters for the most part. Unless you're trading crew specifically. Like you're buying crew from Umbra and then selling them to other places or buying marines or something and sell them to other places but uh you never really need this this ship um you can always just bring a carrier and carriers have tons of capacity uh crew capacity in them the phaeton s tier ship um phenomenal freighter it's designed to carry fuel and carry fuel it does um would strongly recommend bringing that in your fleet uh just replacing your dram as soon as possible with the phaeton uh, next we have a Phantom um, S tier ship. If you're doing any kind of raiding, get your hand on as many Phantoms as possible. One, they they have a pretty um, substantial uh, crew carrying capacity, so they're good in that sense. 
and then two they add plus 200 marine strength to each one of your your uh, for each one that you bring so it makes your raids more effective uh, next we have the salvage gantry uh, these are staples in my fleet I usually run like between two or three of them um, they reduce the cost of surveying um, they increase the amount of resources you get from salvaging and they increase your post battle salvage so when you do things like convoy raids, you end up getting more supplies, more fuel, more heavy armaments, um, you know, more machinery. Like you get just more for carrying these in your fleet. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely recommend these. Uh, next up, we have the Pirate Strike. I don't really use this ship. Um, I I don't know what the difference is between the Pirate Strike and the Strike are off the top of my head. I assume this has less ordnance points, um, but the Pirate Strike is a good ship. Um, I mean, I assume it's a good ship. The Shrike, though, phenomenal ship. Um, staple in my fleet. I'm going to actually move this up closer. Um, staple in my fleet, you slap it with antimatter blasters and some sabos, and this thing just goes to town. Um, great ship there. Uh, you can put an ion pulser on it as well, so you can disable you know, opponent ships. If you want to put it in the support role, you can use the ion beam which is really good um, you bring a couple of these and they disable whatever ship you you uh, send them to target um, if you deploy them in pairs or, or groups of three they're really the most effective in that in that situation uh, next up we have the Sunder <laughs> I want the Sunder to be good but it's it's too much of a glass cannon um, I would put it above a uh, I, I put it above a doom um the sunder is a phenomenal ship it has a large energy slot in the middle of it and it also has high energy focus which is phenomenal because it does more damage um the problem is its ordnance its capacity is really low so it's very easy to overwhelm this ship um it's hard to design it to be flux efficient uh you you can but then you have to do things like forego the large energy slot and then at that point it's like why are you even bringing us under um i, I want to love the ship i have some interesting designs in mind i'll post them in the discord but uh it's just it's kind of tough uh next up we have the tardis i don't know what this ship does i don't use it um i the only reason i know it's a tardis is because i blow it up in the pursuit phase <laughs> and it's not i don't know yeah i think it's a cargo ship it's a civilian cargo ship i think uh, maybe uh here we have the valkyrie uh valkyrie is okay uh it's a uh, troop transport ship it gives you uh plus 100 to your marine strength uh whereas like the phantom gives plus 200 it's an okay ship um if you can get phaeton or phantoms though and just replace your valkyries with uh with phantoms uh ooh, we have the pirate afflictor um and then we have the regular afflictor uh the pirate afflictor is in b tier because it has less ordnance points than the regular afflictor um but the regular afflictor great ship put three antimatter blasters on it max out its capacity and then slap um phase anchor on it uh great ship nasty ship um it can use its special ability to increase the damage that a ship takes and then use antimatter blasters to either um, apply a ton of shield pressure or punch a substantial hole in uh, the opponent, opponent's armor. Okay. Alright. It is no surprise the LP Brawler is going in S tier. If there was a double S tier above this, I would put it in that. The LP Brawler is in it is a crack ship oh my god I, man this ship is whoo this is a ship that made star sector fun for me once i piloted this ship i was like okay combat is not that scary i understand it Th man okay all right i'm gonna stop gushing i'm just gonna talk about like why what makes it so good first of all built-in safety overrides right so you're saving 15 ordnance points right there um, on top of that, it has accelerated ammo feed, which is one of the best um, special abilities in the game, right? It reduces your flux cost for, for a short period of time and increases the amount of um, your rate of fire, right? Uh, 
it has two medium ballistic slots, which which are so powerful. The ballistic slot is 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 king for for in the medium size. Like whereas medium energy weapons really fall off because they lack damage or are substantive, like um, like an ability to do a lot of damage quickly. Ballistic weapons in the medium slot do a ton of damage, like a, a, an insane amount of damage. Um, so what you do is you slap two assault chain guns in there, and you have some of the the most uh, damaging high explosive weapons in the game. Uh, and then it has two uh, universal slots, which is good. Um, a lot of flexibility there. What I end up doing is I end up putting sabos in there, uh, which are a missile. They don't really cost much, and they punch through shields. And then my assault chain guns do the uh, the high explosive damage to take it down the ship. Um, next up, it is it, it is insanely fast and maneuverable. Um, it is of course a frigate, so it gets additional bonuses there. You can go like wolf pack tactics if you want, right, and build your your fleet out that way. Uh, just overall, a, a monster of a ship. Um, if you are if you're combat shy. Um, if you don't really enjoy combat, I strongly recommend jumping into LP Brawler. Oh yeah, and it also has phenomenal shields. Um, it has a shield, has a shield uh, to damage ratio that is uh, below one, which is what you want. Um, yeah, so if you're you're afraid of combat or you're you're combat shy, definitely jump into LP Brawler. Give it a try. Um, again, it's two medium um, assault chain guns or two assault chain guns in the medium slots two sabos on the side and then um max your cap and vents um if you want you can build in expanded missile racks so you get more missiles um just a great ship try it out uh unfortunately though the brawler cousins the ones that aren't the lp brawler very bad the the tech the tri tech version of the brawler is especially bad because it has medium energy slots which, like we just talked about, don't really have enough, um, you know, like, punch for their for their category. I think the energy weapons overall need to need another pass. Um, they just don't do as much damage. Um, so the LP brawl, the the Tritachian brawler having two of them is just it, it's it's not really useful. Um, you could put phase lances in there, maybe. Um, you can try to put heavy blasters, but there's not enough capacity on this to make that really work well. And then on top of that, if you want it to be effective, you need to add safety overrides back to it, which is 50 ordnance points that the, the brawler just doesn't have to spare. Um, and its special ability is plasma jets, which, okay, you made a frigate faster, yay. Like, who, who, who cares? <laughs> Um, not really, not really a well-designed ship. I hope it gets a, another look. Next up, we have the regular brawler. Um, it's okay. It gets its ballistic slots back, which are good. Um, it just doesn't have the special. Its special ability, I think, is maneuvering jets, so it can turn faster, which is okay. Um, and then it doesn't have safety overrides. You know, same problem. So just not, not really worth it. Uh, next we have the Centurion. Uh, it's an okay tank ship. Um, not the best in the game. Its gimmick is that it has damper field. Um, so it can take a lot of uh, damage to the chin and mitigate it. Um, but if you can break down a shield, which isn't that tough, um, you can pretty easily overwhelm this. Uh, if you put like two ships on it, it doesn't really stand a chance. Because the damper field has a cooldown and that window where it's cooling down waiting to reapply a stamper field you can easily overload it it is just a frigate at the end of the day um so you can overwhelm this ship pretty easily uh there's a better sh there's a better tank in the game which we'll talk about a little later on uh we have the cerberus the lp cerberus is really great uh actually i'm, I'm gonna have to put it in d tier or c tier the problem is it just doesn't have shields same with the Cerberus. Its armaments, though, phenomenal. Um, for this being a frigate, it has a medium ballistic slot and then a bunch of smalls. Um, so really great ship there. Uh, if you are at the very early game, I definitely recommend picking up one or two Cerberuses. You're very unlikely to lose them because they have rugged construction. So you know, feel free to use them as aggressively as you want. 
um, especially in like a Wolfpack Tactics scenario, uh, because you're probably going to recover your ships at the end of combat anyway. Um, so really good ships. Paint those up. They also have decent cargo capacity for whatever it's worth. Um, so they can, you know, you can pseudo use them as uh, as freighters as well. Uh, we have the Dram. Uh, Dram's okay. No real complaints. It's a fuel carrier. Does a good job carrying fuel. Replace it with a Phaeton as soon as you can. Uh, the Gremlin might be the worst phase ship in the game. But it is a phase ship, so it gets saved from F tier. Don't use this ship. Use a real phase ship. Use an Afflictor. Use an Eradicator. Use a Doom. Don't don't use gremlins they're slow they have awful armaments and the only thing going for them is that you can use them as a distraction um for like harassing but other than that don't just just don't <laughs> uh ooh. this is either the hermes or the mercury i think this is the hermes i don't know what this ship is for um I don't use this ship at all, ever. I just know it's very fast, um, but I don't I don't use this ship. Next up, we have the Hound. Um, the Hound is a tried and true ship. The problem is it just doesn't have any shields, so it's going to have to go in the C tier. Uh, same with the Ludic Path. Uh, these both have safety overrides, so they're pretty good ships. Um, they're, they're good aggressively, so you can at least use them in that capacity. But the Hound just not having any shields really holds it back. Um, it does have an, a, a medium ballistic slot though on the front, so um, pretty good. Hyperion, of course, S tier ship. Um, fast, maneuverable, slap safety overrides on it. You can use its phase teleport offensively. Um, in that case, it has two, it has uh, three medium slots. Two of those being energy weapons. Uh, the difference with the Hyperion versus like the other. Um, ships that I talked about where the medium energies weren't good is that the Hyperion has a ton of capacity and flux dissipation so you can get away with using something like ion pulsers or um, heavy blasters on the Hyperion whereas you can't use it on other ships um, so strongly recommend it's a good ship it's a great ship even uh, it might be better than the LP brawler but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put it above the LP brawler <laughs> Uh, next we have the kites. The kites are really great ships uh, for the early game. I'm gonna put the hedge kite at the front because this has this has built-in militarized subsystem, making it more effective in combat. Um, and then the other variants, I'm gonna go ahead and put those here. I'm gonna put them above the enforcer. Uh, yeah, put those above the enforcer. Um, good ships in the very very early game. Um, if you're, you know, if you have like a few thousand credits and you don't know what to spend it on, uh, pick up a kite. It's not going to hurt. It has two medium missile slots, which is incredible. Um, and then it also has, uh, I think, I think two small ballistic slots, which is okay. Um, but yeah, bringing additional missiles to the fight in the form of like, I think this is like four deployment points. It's okay pretty good uh the lasher man the lasher is great uh let's move this up uh the lasher is a great ship there is a variant in the game of the um there's a, a ship design of the lasher in the game that boasts like all atropos missiles and then um dual auto cannons and it is a little, it is a little monster of a ship. Um, it has shields, so it's effective in combat. I'm gonna put this here. So it is effective in combat. You can bring it to to, to the fight. Um, it has four small missile slots, which is above average for for frigates, and it doesn't. It costs barely anything to deploy. Um, it also has three small ballistic slots. Um, definitely, if you are looking to build like a smaller fleet or keep a small fleet for some reason, definitely, definitely look at consider bringing the Lasher uh, into the fight. I'm gonna put the Lasher above. I would put the Lasher in A tier, at least this one. 
Um, just a just a, a a great ship overall. Put it right there. Uh, next up, we have the Mercury. One of these is the Mercury. The other one is the the Hermes. I don't know which is which. Um, again, I don't know what the purpose of the ship is. Oh boy. Oh man. Ooh, here we have the monitor. This this ship is incredible. Um, I don't know many people that are using the monitor. Uh, it doesn't. I don't think it gets nearly as much respect as it should. This thing is. This thing is unethical. Um, maybe depending on the popularity of my Zero to Hero Let's Play, um, it may catch a nerf. And I do apologize, but to be honest, I think it kind of needs a nerf. Because as is now, it is too, too good. Um, this thing can tank anything in the game short of the, um, uh, slight spoiler. Um, but I mean, I guess if you're watching this, then you've probably watched other Star Sector content. Um, it's short of the Ziggurat, it can tank anything else in the game. Um, so any of the, uh, redacted ships uh the special fight that you do near blue giant i won't say so much about that but um this thing it, it it can't be killed it can't be killed so unlike the the centurion right which is also considered a tank ship the centurion tanks with its body right it uses damper field to mitigate the damage that it takes um pretty significantly damper field is no joke um it can eat a it can eat attacking on lance right like it's it's no joke um but it uses its body to tank um and the problem with that is that armor and hull are limited are finite the monitor uses fortress shield uses its shield um in conjunction with its special ability fortress shield to block and mitigate an infinite amount of damage um you you cannot kill this thing uh you can't um it is fast, it is maneuverable, it has Fortress Shield, and then it also has a special ability which is called Flux Shunt, um, which can be uh, can be improved even further with officer abilities. But uh, just as a baseline, what it does is it's able to mitigate hard flux damage um, while its shields are up. That is incredibly powerful. Um, hard flux in the game is uh, what forces you to lower your shields. Right, if you don't lower your shields while you build up hard flux, uh, what will happen is your ship will overload and then you're just a sitting duck. Um, being able to mitigate hard flux without lowering your shields means you're never in danger, right? Um, so you're you're very safe there. Uh, this, sh this ship is incredible. Um, if you haven't used a monitor, incorporate it into your fleets. Two or three of them, they're frigates, they barely cost any deployment points. They're five to deploy, I believe. Um, add them into your fleets, stick them on whatever the biggest target on the opponent's side is, and just watch them work wonderfully. Um, really allows you to to uh, set a, an anchor point on the battlefield and then move your fleet around that that monitor to provide like flanking opportunities for the rest of your fleet. Strongly, strongly recommend this ship. <laughs> Next we have the Mud Skipper. Mud Skipper is a, is a, it's a meme, so I'm going to put it in D tier. Uh, the Mud Skipper Mark III has one single large ballistic slot on it, um, but the ship is a civilian ship, so you have to balance militarized subsystems with, uh, like you can't get safety overrides and a large ballistic slot and um militarized subsystem like you can't have it all and you can't have like capacity um i will continue to tinker on this ship i think there's something with using the mjolnir cannon or like a gauss cannon uh with this ship i'm s still working on it uh it is not viable it is paper thin two small shots like one missile will kill this thing uh definitely don't recommend it uh the mudskipper the the just regular freighter version i don't know what the purpose of the ship is um so it's just gonna go in f tier uh next we have the omen omen is a 
Ooh, another S tier ship. Um, an Omen can solo probably like 1v4 frigates. Um, just because it has the EMP emitter ability, which is incredibly powerful. Um, the, the EMP emitter scales, I believe, with point defense. So anything that inc that increases point defense range or point defense damage will also affect the uh, EMP emitter. I don't know if that's intentional, but um, th that's a nice bonus. Uh, but the EMP emitter just baseline does a lot of damage by itself. Uh, great ship. I definitely recommend bringing like two of these and just have them escort you personally. Um, they're going to get you out of a bind. They're going to swat down all those annoying salamander missiles. Um, they're going to provide covering fire when uh, the opponent shoots like uh, harpoon sword you or whatever and you need to dump some flux. They'll uh, they'll have your back. Uh, next we have the Ox, also known as the Tug. Um, I don't really use this ship. Uh, Basically what it does is increases the the um, burn speed of your fleet by one for each ox that you bring to the to the, the fleet. But the trade-off is it burns a ton of fuel. I don't really need this ship. Um, just pick up, what's it called? Uh, I think it's called Sensor, which adds plus one to your fleet um, when, you, when you use uh, Sustained Burn. Just use that instead. Don't, don't bring this. Uh, we have the Scarab. I'm going to put the Scarab near the Medusa. Uh, good ship. I don't know how to design it. Um, I'm still working on designs for the Scarab. But it's a solid ship. Uh, it has Temporal Shell, I think, is the name of the ability. Uh, let's it move at twice the speed. Um, so, that's good. I hear using laser weapons on it has a funny interaction with Temporal Shell, which allows them to do double damage. Which, in my mind, shouldn't be the case, but okay if it is. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm still working on Scarab designs. Uh, but it, okay, sure. Um, I'd, I'd I'd put it higher than B tier, but I just don't I don't play with it, so I don't know how to assess it properly. Uh, the Pirate Shade. Hmm. Hmm. It's it's a good ship. Uh, the Shades are great ships. Um, they also have the, the EMP ability that the Omen does. The problem is that they're a phase ship, so in order for them to use their ability, they have to be out of phase, which is kind of dangerous. Um, they're, actually, I'm going to move this one a little higher. Um, they're okay as a tank um, in that they're incredibly fast ships, but for using their special ability... Um, I, it, it, it's a little dicey, right? it needs support, it can't be the only ship out there, um, because it doesn't have any shields, so, uh, okay, next up we have the Shepard, um, Shepard, good early ship, good overall, uh, ship, it has a small missile slot, um, a small universal, and then it has two ballistic slots, uh, good cargo capacity, which is a nice ship. Uh, it is a civilian ship though, so it is limited in combat, but it's okay. Uh, the Tempest, phenomenal ship. Uh, S tier, A tier. Yeah, S tier. Uh, yeah. We're gonna have to rearrange this. Yeah, that's fine. Anyway, the Tempest, really great ship. Um, really good frigate. It's been nerfed a couple times. Um, it changed. But uh, what the Tempest does is it brings two medium energy slots to the to the fight. Um, has a very low deployment cost and it also brings, uh, I think, one missile, one small missile slot to the fight. Um, where it shines is its Tempest drones, which provide point defense. Um, and because it has a very low deployment cost, you can deploy like four. You can deploy multiple Tempests. And what I like to do is use them in small groups of uh, two to four, and then just set them on one target. Uh, they're extremely fast ships, very maneuverable, so you don't really have to worry about them um, getting pinned down. Um, but basically, you assign four of them to a group, and you tell those four to go kill like a cruiser ship, and they'll fly around the cruiser, um, kind of like angry bees, and uh, and take it down. Um, 
so very good there. Vigilance, great ship. Uh, it has a medium. The the Vigilance is a better missile ship than the Griffin. It it it's better than the Griffin. It has a medium missile slot, um, and a medium ballistic slot. Uh, and it's a frigate, so you can deploy multiple of them. Uh, you can bring a ton of them to the fight. Sometimes I like to put, just put salamanders on them, but that's really underutilizing them. Um, what they're best for is bringing additional sabos to the fight and just having them escort whatever your DPS ship is. Um, so they use their sabos and then you can just focus on like high explosive damage. Uh, great ships, would strongly recommend. Uh, they also have fast reload, which allows them to... Uh, to shoot their missiles off um, even faster. Uh, they don't have to wait for the cooldown on uh, on their missiles. They can just fire them back to back to back. Uh, the Wayfarer, great ship. Um, six armament slots. I believe it's two. I believe it's two universals on the front, two ballistics on the back, and then two ballistics on the side. Something like that. Anyway, you can put antimatter blasters on a Wayfair, uh, at least one of them, and then use it as a um, pretty pretty good uh, early sh or early combat ship in the in the early game, and then it's also a decent freighter. Uh, it's a relatively large cargo capacity for a freighter, um, so would recommend. I use this in my uh, Space of Salvage run. Uh, good anchor, good anchor ship. Uh, and then finally, we have the Wolves. Uh, wolves are just great ships. Uh, the Pirate Wolf has less ordnance points, but it's still a good ship. And the regular Wolf, I would... I don't know if I would put it in S tier, uh, but I would definitely put it up here in high A tier. Uh, the problem is its shield only covers half of it, so it's susceptible to missile spam towards the uh, towards the late game there. Um, whereas all of these... Like all of these frigates in S tier... Well, the, the Tempest is up here. It has the same shield as the wolf uh, but the tempest is just a way faster ship so uh, for that reason i feel more comfortable bringing tempest into larger fights than i do bringing the wolf in uh but that's the tier list um i I'm, I'm not gonna rearrange it unless i see anything like egregious yeah it looks looks good on the whole um i'm gonna do a quick run through um Anything B tier and below, obviously, or er, on story points, anything B tier and below, I wouldn't spend a story point on. I'm um, just quickly going to go through to see what I'd spend a story point on to recover post combat. Uh, I'd spend a story point to recover or to um, to bring this into your, into your fleet. Um, I would spend a story point on a Aurora, on an Astral, on a Paragon, yes, yes. Yeah, I would spend a story point on a Legion. Uh, if it's my first one, I would spend a story point on an Atlas. After that, I wouldn't spend a story point on it. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, if it's my first champion, then I would spend a story point to recover it. After that, I wouldn't. Uh, Wolf, no, no. Shrike, maybe. Uh, early game. I would spend a, a story point on a strike, um, just because it's a very good destroyer. Uh, but that's debatable. Um, you can buy destroyer. You can buy strikes. Yeah, actually, no. I wouldn't spend a story point on a strike. You can buy strikes pretty reliably. Uh, at least the pirate version, for a little bit until you get your hands on a on a proper strike. Dominator fourteen. Yes. Uh, I would spend two, up to two story points on these. Uh, they're really good ships. The Legion. Maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, the It having ballistics really holds it back. Um, whereas this having missile slots is, is superior. Uh, the Onslaught 14. Maybe one. Just as a trophy, uh, I don't really use onslaughts like that. Um, but yeah, as a trophy, I would spend one. But I mean, not necessary. Uh, Heron, <sighs> Ugh. I 
I've lost this ship so many times. Um. If. If it's my only carrier, yes. I would pay to restore it, or I would pay one if it's my first Herod. After that, probably not. Um. It is also rare that you lose herons anyway. But yeah. Uh, don't don't use your herons in close combat. That's not what they're there for. Uh, Dominator, no. These are just way too common. Um, you can get these fighting the hedge if you don't want to buy them. And you'll usually get like two or three of these. Uh, Drover, no. Lasher, no. Pirate, no. Yeah, none of all these. Uh, then just a quick glance. Is there any... Nah. Yeah, so that's it. That's the tier list. Um, that's also the, the ships that I would spend story points on. Oh, maybe. If it's my first conquest, I would spend a story point on a conquest. Um, but yeah, that's it. Hope you guys enjoy that. Um, kind of a fun video. Uh, also, I realize now looking at OBS, uh, you can't really see the, the bottom tier. That's fine. We can scroll down. Um, don't don't take any of these ships. Nah, just just don't. <laughs> um, D tier as well. Um, I would avoid those. C tier, okay, not bad. Uh, and then B and up is kind of what I would use in my like actual fleet. But I hope you guys enjoyed that video. More of a fun kind of video for today. Um, I'll have uh, the link in the Discord. Uh, some of these I've de I've designed. Um, we have a ship design on our discord i can link that um check them out uh if you haven't used any of these ships consider incorporating them into your fleet and uh see what they like um but other than that grumpy out <laughs>